Hi everyone, this is Jackie Cooper with um, Crypto Mom 2 talk show, but I'm also going to be sharing this on my other talk show as well, which is Jay Cooper Travels, because today um, I am talking about a topic that's all near and dear to our heart, which is taxes, and how do we um, document them, how do we keep track of them, so that way we can stay on the up and up. Um, and I have a really special guest on, uh, Joshua Thompson, who I've had on multiple shows before, and, and I'm going to have him introduce himself. Uh, but I wanted to explain to everyone, if you're new to Crypto Mom 2, um, how I got started and the background of the talk show. Um, last year, during the COVID time period, I decided I was going to start my journey in learning about altcoins and cryptocurrency and blockchain. And so it's been over a year now. I had been curious about this way before, but I never took the first step. And I'm really, really um, proud to say that now I am so much more familiar with what a non-fungible token is, what blockchain is, what staking is, what, you know, so all these new terms are, but I'm still constantly learning because this is an evolving uh, technology and Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining, cryptocurrency, there's always these new developments and the creativity that is being shown is just amazing to me. And I'm really always honored whenever I can talk to a, a programmer or a developer of a new protocol, a new exchange, because they um, there's so much going on in this whole field. But as a result of that, there's still going back to the basics. When you are getting involved with cryptocurrency, um, we have fun going to an exchange and buying a coin, but then we have to think about the next step. And that's where I have um, kind of gotten involved with enlarging, enlarging my team. So Joshua Thompson is part of my team. He's an accountant, but I also, my background is as a lawyer. So I know the value of having lawyers on your team, because even though we are um, playing in this, and again, this show is not financial advice, um, we have to be aware of that it is an investment. There are risks involved. And we also have a responsibility for proper recording of the information and proper reporting of the information. So that's why I asked Joshua to come on because um, I was looking at how do I record my transactions? What do I need to have in place to know whether or not there is um, a taxable event. You know, the, again, there's so many different things that happen that, you know, we get caught up in the moment of doing an exchange. But I've also held a coin for over 12 months. Well, if I've held a coin for over 12 months, does that mean that there's a capital gain long term, short term? You know, again, all these things that I'm learning about that I need a professional to say, okay, help me. So that's why I have Joshua on. And we're going to talk a little bit about cryptocurrency and taxes and all that other good stuff. And then we're going to go and talk about something else that businesses need to know about, and that's fringe benefits. And I would invite everyone to like and subscribe both to Crypto Mom 2, as well as my Jay Cooper Travels talk show, because Joshua and I have had multiple conversations about tax consequences and what you need to know on a variety of topics. So it's hard to stay up to date and current. And that's why I also encourage you to find your team, find your person that you can trust and talk to because this is, it gets very complicated. So um, with that being said, Joshua, welcome to Crypto Mom 2. And I, I want you to um, share more about who you are and how people can contact you for your tax group. So that way um, they can also reach out to you and um, get answers to their questions. So welcome. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. Appreciate you having me back. It's always a pleasure to be here with you guys, sharing some information, sharing some knowledge, some information that me and Jackie feel that everyone 
needs, whether you're a business owner, individual, no matter what you have going on, some information that we think you guys can use. Um, once again, I'm the owner of Thompson Tax Group. What we do is we focus at the end of the day on the tax code. We nerd out on it. We do a lot of tax planning for business owners and individuals in most cases, where we figure out what strategies you're not using, what code advantages are out there that you're not taking advantage of. And a lot of times we'll just do a free analysis of your tax return, go through it and figure out what can we put in place? What can we do better? Or did something get misreported and needs to get fixed? So that's a lot of times what we're doing. Even in some cases, we could go back previous years and figure out what was needs to be changed and then get you guys a refund if that if you guys do a refund or at least lower your taxes based on the previous years. Now, that's in some cases, but not all the cases, but that's what we focus on. I'm a big believer in um, master your trade, uh, not, necessarily, not necessarily always be a jack of all trades, no master of none. I try and be a master of taxes at the end of the day and focus into it 100% of my time. So that's a little bit about me. Happy to help you guys. You guys can reach me at thompsontaxgroup.com. My phone number here goes straight to my cell phone is 805-364-0908. And all that information is also on the website. Once again, thompsontaxgroup.com. And it will also be in the block below. So in case you're driving, listening, don't have pen and paper, you can go back to the Crypto Mom 2 talk show or the Jay Cooper Travels talk show. And it will also be there. So I'm going to share my screen and um, we're going to take a look at um, the IRS website because, again, we're talking about taxes. So let's go back to the source. Now, I will mention a lot of the people that I consult with and talk to are global, so they are located both in Canada and overseas, but today we are only talking about the United States, um, and we're looking, I brought this up, uh, the, the IRS page, it talks about virtual currencies. For those that are on the talk show side, you might not be seeing this, but if you go to the virtual side of the YouTube, you'll be able to see it. It is a page, and um, uh, Joshua was explaining to me earlier a little bit about this page, but there are um, there's information here. So I'm going to let you, Joshua, you explain what it is that we're looking at here. Yeah, definitely. So we're on, you know, everyone's favorite website to check out, irs.gov, and they're basically laying out a little information about virtual currencies. Now, what the IRS will do, they'll give a little information right here on their website but they give a the lot more of their information in either court cases or sometimes what they call as publications. They'll put some information out there. And really when it comes down to virtual currency, they haven't released and classified every little thing just yet. I think they're kind of waiting to figure out where it goes, if they end up doing a, the treasury and it does a virtual dollar, how they're going to handle all of that. So I think that's why the IRS has been kind of silent on a lot of these topics. But really at the end of the day, the way virtual currencies are taxed is if you go on say Coinbase or gate.io or Binance and you buy that cryptocurrency, the way it's gonna get taxed, it's almost getting taxed similar as if it was a stock. So if you buy it at say $10, and then you want to buy something or even sell it or give it to a friend. Now it went from $10 to $20. You now have $10 that spread as gains. And if you held that currency for you know 12 months or more, you're now looking at long-term capital gains. And that's a benefit. We can talk a little bit more about that. If it's less than 12 months now, short-term capital gains, it's now classifying your ordinary income rate. So whichever tax bracket you fall into is what tax bracket that gain will fall into at the end of the day. Um, so that's really how virtual currency is taxed when you're investing in it or you're buying it. That That's how they're handling it right now. And now when it comes down to reporting your losses, now people are really upset because they're like, well, it's not fair. It shouldn't be taxed like that. It shouldn't be taxed when I buy something or trade it. That's the downside. However, there's a positive. If you buy Bitcoin, you bought it at $56,000, and now I think today it's maybe about $36,000, and you have that $20,000 loss, well, now you're not limited. You can take that entire loss on your tax return and, and um, basically wipe out a lot of your ordinary income that you had in other sources. Now, a stock, you can't do that. If you have these big losses in stocks, you get limited at $3,000. However, virtual currency, it's a nice version of it, you can now take that 20,000, 30,000 and apply it to other income that you had on your tax return. 
but if you hold the if you're if you're not trading um the the bitcoin or the altcoin or the digital asset and you're holding it past the year mark and then you do an exchange um that then you would be um looking at long-term capital gains correct 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 so yeah. if you hold for more than 12 months and then trade it sell it um give it away or whatever it may be now you're looking at long-term capital gains and it's better to have long-term capital gains instead of short-term long-term capital gains it could be taxed as little as zero percent up to 20 percent, depending on what the item is or it could be if it's short-term capital gains it falls in your tax bracket so if you make you know four hundred thousand dollars a year you could be looking at a tax bracket of 35 percent now that short-term capital gains is now taxed at that 35 percent as well but if it was long-term capital gains maybe it'll only be taxed at 20 percent and that's a good strategy right there if you know or kind of have an idea of where your income lies you can plan on okay i need to sell it this year i need to hold on to it till next year when i know my income may not be as high so you get in that lower tax bracket so a sale is that moving it from one exchange to another or is that moving it from the digital form to the fiat form it's usually moving it from the digital form to the fiat form i know a lot of times you'd want to double check with your your wallet who you have your wallet through to make sure that how they report it because sometimes virtual currencies and wallets and exchanges they're new to the whole reporting to the IRS scene, um, it's become, now becoming more of a requirement. So sometimes, even though if you transfer it to another wallet or something like that, they'll treat it as a sale. And then they'll show here that you sold it, even though you still have it over here. Now you wanna make sure it matches up. So that way you either not taxed on it or minimal tax, or at least your basis is getting accounted for as time goes on. So you wanna be very careful about that at the end of the day. And that's why the um, documentation is so important. So if, I mean, I'm looking at it like I have um, a credit union bank, two credit union bank accounts, and I might transfer my dollars from one account to the other account, but I'm not earning new dollars. I'm just moving the dollars from one to the other. So I need to make sure that I document that that transaction wasn't earning new things. So that's why I asked you about the exchanges, because if I have a certain amount of Bitcoin, I'm just moving it over to another exchange, which to me is like another bank account. I'm not earning new Bitcoin. If it's at the same value, if it's in, if it's increased in value, then I've I've actually, or decreased in value, then I've generated an event which actually could be taxable. So, you know, this moving back and forth, everyone has to kind of think about where, like you said, where's the basis? What was the original price that I bought this coin at before I move it to another exchange to trade it for another coin? So, you know, again, there's, there's, there needs to be a little bit of thought and planning as we go forward on that. Yeah. So um, that's definitely why you need to have a professional that can help you with setting it up and thinking it through. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lot of programs out there that can help out with the reporting on the individual side of things. Um, I'm not sure on the exact name. I think it's like Coin Tracker that does something similar to that. It helps keep track of every transaction that you have and then ensures when you go to report to the IRS, it's reported properly. It helps keep track of your basis, it's, it's, um, if I'm familiar with it correctly. And it just makes the whole process a lot easier. The last thing you wanna do is go to your tax professional April 14th, say, yes, I traded Bitcoin, but I don't know how much it was worth or when I bought or anything like that. Cause I can, you're going on extension <laughs> at that point. Cause we gotta figure this out. <laughs> yeah, especially because um, I know you and I were talking about this on the tax return right now, there's a little box that asks you, have you been um, involved with, you know, Bitcoin or currencies, digital assets? So you definitely wanna be honest and forthright on that because um, even though it is very private, no one can know your wallet, um, there, there are, it is traceable. And if you're moving US dollars to an outside wallet, then there's going to be a transfer. So everything can be tracked in some way. 
So um, what other information do you think that um, those that are listening on Crypto Mom need to know about the digital assets and the taxable occurrences? Yeah, so I think another big one is for miners out there, a lot of people mine. And right now, and this could change tomorrow, really, but right now in the eyes of the IRS, if you're mining, that mining income, every coin you receive for having your miner plugged in is now taxed as self-employment income. So it's almost as if you have your own business. You have to worry about self-employment tax. You have to worry about ordinary income taxes. And now that's the downside of it, but then it could also transition and it could be a good thing because now you have a business and that business, it, it opens up to a lot more tax advantages that you can take advantage of uh, at the end of the day, because now it's just not a W-2 job. It's a literal business and you can start writing off certain things, taking advantage of um, family. If you have family, close family and uh, fringe benefits is another big one that in some cases you can take advantage of, which I think we're going to be talking about next. We are going to be talking about it next. So I am a, a Bitcoin miner. And um, I did this year um, purchase through uh, VBIT, and that information will be in the block below in case anyone's interested, a mining rig. So, um, so as a result of that, um, you know, I have uh, the cost of the equipment, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, I'll be able to write that off against the income that I'm earning from my mining machine and all the Bitcoin that's going into my wallet. So that should be a balance. Am I correct in thinking that? You're 100% correct. Now, you just got to make sure when you have it to um, capitalize and make sure it's an asset on your books. And then if you're required to depreciate it over five years, three years, whatever, whatever you need to depreciate on, most times you could take it all in the first year. But which is great because if you just buy that miner um, this year, you could put in an asset in the place this year make your income and then use that miner to reduce that, that income as well. Cause it is a business expense. You bought the miner, it's producing new income. It's the same thing as like going and buy a computer that's going to help you produce income by working on software. Now, um, so that, that's, that's something that, you know, again, everyone, when you're thinking about the documentation that's needed, you have certain things that when you are in business that you can write off again. So that's another reason to definitely have someone that knows this, um, you know, on your team. So you can make sure you're taking all the write-offs that you're allowed to take off. Um, so we've talked about um, the IRS in terms of digital assets, treating it more like property, not like um, uh, currency per se, even though that's the federal rules. Now there are state laws in different states dealing with cryptocurrency. How does the state taxes, how does that impact or does it? So it depends on every state. And that's one thing you definitely want to sit down and talk with your tax professional about because um, some states may go as far as saying, um, okay, we don't care about it. We'll just treat it as a stock. Some states say, we're going to treat it just like the federal does. And some states may be like, we're, well, no one really doing this, but we may just ignore it or something. It, it just very, it, it all depends on the state. So you definitely want to check with every state to see what their guidance on it, because it can vary state to state at the end of the day, which obviously affects your tax return and how much you're paying in taxes based on that income. Exactly. And the other thing that I'm going to mention, and I know Joshua and I've talked about this on another recent um, episode, um, this is July. Now, I don't know when you're going to be listening to the, the talk show, but we're already halfway through the year. So think about how are you planning for the rest of the six months of your taxable year? So that way you can take full advantage of getting as many write-offs as possible. So you're not turning around in December thinking, oh, I have this amount of income. I need this amount of write-offs. So I'm not taxed. So if you plan now, then you'll be able to actually, um, uh, be ahead of the game. So talking about planning, um, we I think we should transition into the fringe benefit side because many of us are individuals, but many of us have other businesses and there might be other fringe benefits that we can legitimately use as write-offs. So um, what would you like to share on that front? Yeah, so right before I um, hop into that one, I did want to say is 
if you work with a tax professional, ask for a tax projection. Um, it's great to ask for this time of the year. I know I'm doing several of them right now where you just ask them at the rate you're going, what your tax is going to be at the end of the day. You know, they'll ask for some documents some questions and they can tell you, listen, if you continue this path that you're going come April 15th, you're going to owe X or you're going to get a refund in Y. So that's a great way to start planning for it and putting money away. The second thing I wanted to say is for that virtual currency box on the tax return that you're seeing now, it only applies if you actually sell virtual currency. If you're just buying virtual currency, the IRS actually wants you to write on there, no. Because if you write on there, yes, but all you did was buy, they're going to be looking for it on your tax return. If they don't see it, you're going to get a love note in the mail. So that's something you kind of just want to know as well. If you're doing your tax return or even for tax professionals that are doing your tax return, make sure that they're doing that properly. But the big thing, now that you're... Um, now that you're a minor, if you're a minor, you have business income. One of the biggest things you start taking advantage of, which I'll share my screen right now, is fringe benefits. And this is just the IRS website, the publication I was talking about earlier, talking about fringe benefits. And really what fringe benefits are, it's basically a way to give yourself, some, sometimes yourself, not always, but your employees benefits that are non-taxable to, to them but a tax deduction to yourself. This is a lot of times the best way to keep an employee at your company, to keep them on board. Um, for instance, you open a huge mining farm and you have employees um, handling everything. You, a lot of times you utilize fringe benefits to keep them coming back and not necessarily ask for higher pay. A lot of times people want the benefits more. There's, for example, accident and health benefits. Um, that's something, for instance, if you have insurance, if you ever get hurt, um, insurance not just covers your health stuff, but also in, in covers you in the ICU and stuff like that. Because a lot of times insurance won't pay you, you what you lost in wages based on how long you've been hurt. So that's something that's covered for. Achievement awards. If you want to give a, an employee an award for being on time, you know, give them $600, good job, then that's something that's non-taxable to them, but it's a tax deduction still to you. Like I said, best of both worlds. Adoption assistance. Adoption is expensive. As an employer, you can help cover that. They, they'll love you more for that. And then you also get a deduction for it as well. Athletic facilities, gyms, um, de minimis benefits. Basically, that means small benefits that don't really cost too much. Dependent care assistance. This one's huge. It's a great way to um, pay for your employees. And sometimes your case, and depending how you have your entity set up, pay for your kids' child care, but have it as a deduction at the business level. Same thing with um, education assistance. Sometimes when you have kids in college, it's a great way to write it off on the business by using fringe benefits. Employee discounts, employee stock options, um, employee provided cell phones, group term life insurance, it's a big one, HSAs, lodging. So if you ever had to stay on a business premises, so say you do have that big farm in Hawaii and someone has to go and live there, that's wonderful. That's a fringe benefit to them. They get a place to live and you don't have to um, have to, uh, it, um, say it's income to them for giving them that opportunity. Certain meals, retirement planning services, transportation, tuition reduction, working condition benefits. There's just there's a lot of things in here that you can take advantage of. Now, the other side of it is you want to talk with your tax professional before you do any of these. Because this is something that not many people know about that's out there, but it doesn't, it's not there for everyone. Not everyone can take advantage of fringe benefits. It all depends on how many people are in your company, If you depending on your company, how your entity is set up. Are you the only employee? What, you know, it, it, there's a lot of factors that go into play there before you could just say, I'm going to pay my kids college tuition through the business because um, it, like it's not financial advice or tax advice, but you can't do that unless you actually qualify for it. So the, the benefit of doing the fringe benefits is that it would reduce your taxes is that why people would be going this route exactly exactly so for instance let's bring up the accidental health and benefits so say you're paying um 200 a month for insurance to cover your lost wages if you get hurt or something like that now that 200 a month is tax deductible to the business and you don't have to say, oh, well, the business, I'm using the business to write that off. You don't have to say that. It's still tax-free to you. And then when you get that money from the insurance, that's tax-free on top of that as well. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in that scenario. 
um, do you have to be incorporated in order to enjoy these free, uh, the write-offs of the fringe benefits? It is highly recommended to either have your LLC, a C Corp, S Corporation, or partnership before you utilize any of these fringe benefits. Um, there's definitely some, some boxes you need to cross off before you can start utilizing the benefits. That's the best way to go about it is to be, be a formal entity. Understood. Understood. So um, again, all these links will be below um, on uh, the, the talk show. So that way you can check out the, both the IRS links. Um, and, um, you know, if you have any questions for Joshua, whether it's on the, the crypto side or on the fringe benefits or any of the other accounting, definitely feel free to reach out to him. Joshua, do you want to mention again your contact information? Yeah, I would love to, anyone has questions, reach out to me. Um, but like I said, Joshua at Thompson Tax Group, um, the website's thompsontaxgroup.com. Uh, the phone number here, like I said, straight to my cell phone, the business number is 805-364-0908. That's 805-364-0908. Uh, if you guys want to reach out, happy to talk to you guys about something. Or if you guys just want to just talk about some crypto, I'm happy to talk about that as well. <laughs> For sure. Um, and, and likewise, you know, again, um, if anyone has uh, questions uh, in terms of crypto estate planning or just organizational questions, feel free to contact me for a complimentary consult. Joshua, it's been great talking with you. I know we're going to have future conversations on both Crypto Mom 2 as well as J. Cooper Travel. So everyone definitely like and subscribe because the tax area is constantly evolving and there's a lot to keep up with, especially because as Joshua and I've talked on other episodes, there are new things that are happening within the next few years. And so it's really important, you know, in 2022, it's actually some things are popping in. So it's really important for all of us just to kind of be aware to see how we can take advantage or plan um, so we can keep what we're earning and uh, enjoy the quality of life that we all are striving for. So thank you so much, Joshua, for being on, and I'll talk to you soon. Definitely.